Welcome to today's episode. It's all about this lovely Peugeot 106. My Peugeot 106 little race car. I use it for hill climbs and some sprint races and anywhere where you can drive it on tarmac and some slaloms as well, we call it in here. Uh, it's a super light car, it's only 550 kilo. So shall we look at it? In 1991, Peugeot introduced the 106. That was revolutionary after the 205. Why? Because they like to recreate the success of the 205 Peugeot. Everybody remember 205 GTI, very popular car back in the 80s, very popular in motorsport and for the Yobos as well. Proper hatchback, fantastic car. Took them a couple of years to come up with the 106 GTI, 1.6 engine, just over 100 horsepower, not much weight to the car, so it was quite nippy, quite agile, and fantastic to race with. This actual car only has a 1.4 liter engine, not a GTI, unfortunately, or is it? Let's have a look at the engine bay. So to take the bonnet off, it only takes a couple of clips, because in this car, it's not your conventional bonnet open it up backwards, like in these cars. So what you do, Open these two clips. It's a little bit easier when it's two of you, but still. It's only myself today filming. So take these two clips off. A bit finicky to take it off by yourself because the clips is keep going back and back and back. So what you do, lean it backwards, step it off because it's a couple of clips on the front. There you go. This is how easy to get it off. So, as you noticed, this is not a 1.6, as I said it earlier. This is a KDX engine, 1.4, 75 horsepower. You don't think a lot about these engines, you know, it's not so powerful, blah, 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 blah. But uh, this car is built in Slovakia, especially for slalom races. So the car weighs only 550 kilos, because that was the limit. On a Slovakian slalom, you cannot have any lighter cars in there. That was a bare minimum you, you must have. So, what they done to tune this engine, four Mikoni carbs from a bike. So it's quite heavy. Let's put it this way, yeah? It's not what you think. It's, it's only a 1400, but because it's 550 kilo, even if that was a 75 horsepower car to begin with, right now it's running around just over 100 horsepower with a different camshaft in it and the different carbs. And ignition has been playing around, not by me, by the previous owner. So it revs up to about 72, 74. That's, that's where your limit, limiter hits. So it's quite good. So to gain power and lose weight, they even deleted the alternator which we find out in our first race on a hill climb. Because what you do is normally check the bads. The guy said he's been serviced, so we took it out for a spin for a race. You know, obviously overcheck the car. And uh, we come to the race, we've done the first couple of laps. The battery was a little tad down and the um, car wouldn't start. I felt like, oh, bummer. I, we just somehow run out of battery. I checked the dashboard. There was no battery light in there. So I thought I should, should go just check the cables. Probably either the bulb or the cable has been ripped off when we're going uphill. So we checked it and we just realized it. There is no alternator on the car. So you should ask, why is somebody so stupid not to put an alternator on a car? Well, as you know, and if you drive a race cars, this is specially made for slaloms and short sprints. So short sprints about two mile long. If you're talking about the British hill climbs, that's less than a mile long. So if you have a fully charged battery, this car do last a whole day. The only thing is, the fan only can switch on from inside. There's no automatic turn on, as I find out, because it does get hot if you don't, don't put the fan on, so it doesn't kick in. But it's good, because at least you can override it as well. So what I do when I go out racing, obviously warm the car up, fully charged battery, go on the start line, and just in the last minute when you do sprints, just hit the fan and kick off with it, you know. So sometimes you delay it to start it because uh, the engine is, is still cool enough. But I, when you're doing hill climbs and you rev it, you know, you go pushing the eyes out, little poor little thing, and I just flick it on and that's it. It's 
cracking little car. So, suspension wise, on the front, coil overs. On the back, because it's a torsion rear beam, you just flick it and you lower the car. So the car is lowered. Oh, quite decent, you know, for a normal road race, it's, it's absolutely fine, but it's stiff as anything. So if you go over a snail, you feel it. So what they done with the back of the car, it's no windows, plastic. Fiberglass, fiberglass. So this whole back end, this part is separate so you can access to the back of the car, but nothing else. So the back part, where is your boot and your rear bumper, it's basically again one unit and it's been riveted on, as you can see, with obviously the widening body kit on it. And also there is an exhaust right in the middle of it, but there is no lights if you noticed. So these are just paint. It's nothing else, same as in the front, hence don't really need an alternator, only for ignition and the fan. So if you've got a good battery, it will rust. Because it's a race car, it's a little bit more fun to get in. When you're getting a bit more, let's put it this way, a bit choppy, it's a bit more difficult to get in as your mates are racing, or if yourself, you know, if you're skinny, it's easy to get in. Is that simple? Yes, it is. So this is not an FIA approved raw cage in this one, because this is made for amateur racing. So slaloms, amateur hill climbs, stuff like this, which is accepted in this country. Bear in mind, the, the actual raw cage in this one, is made properly. It's not a cheap one, let's put it this way. So shall we start this car? To start it, need to pull, the choking because it's carbs. There we go. That's the fuel pump kicked in. It's in neutral. It's gonna come to life in a second. It takes time to fill up the carbs. Uh, I not started this car for a week now, a week and a half, so. It starts on the bottom, by the way. You can hear the carbs. I'm not gonna rev the engine because it's 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 actually cold. I'm not pre-started it before the video or anything like this, so it's not it's not happening, but it is what it is. So let's jump out and hear that engine from outside. This car is all about driving. Obviously, the car is stationary and is not road legal, but let me show you what this car can do on a track. Let's view the first track, which is in a dry, lovely track, going uphill and works absolutely lovely. Here is some cool looking t-shirt design. You can buy it on amazon.com, amazon.co.uk, and every purchase you make, you helping my channel growing. I leave the link in description.
had you like that. If you notice, when we're going up in a hill, I let the throttle go a few places because that was my first hill climb race with this car. And to be honest with you, the car is so light. When we went over the hill, there was a point in there when I feeling the car start lifting off on fourth gear on a limiter. So to be honest with you, I was a little bit scared to, you know, stepping out and I don't know what the car gonna do because first race, you know, it's, you take it steady. I drove the car on track before. It's different, but you know, when you got trees on one side, trees on the other side, you know, we're doing it for fun now, not for, you know, blood bluff, you know, and nothing like this, you know, it's, 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 it's a fun game. Me and my mate going out, he's sitting in a navigator seat. I shouldn't need a navigator, but he's sitting there because we do it as a mate having fun on a weekend, nothing else, you know, it's, it's all about pure pleasure and joy, which is what it's supposed to be, you know, it's for enjoyment, not you know, overstress it because if you start overstressing it, it's not a fun race anymore. We don't do it for competition. This is own budget, own money, own car, you know, without no sponsors. So it's about fun. When I talk about sponsors, I should talk about today's video sponsors. Lola Workwear. This is why I got this one on, you know. Also, you can lean down because if you get it dirty, it doesn't matter. It's workwear. It's polycotton. So when you wash it, you don't need to iron it. It's perfect. I've been using this for some time. This is my own one. So I prove it to you. This is works really well. I have this for over six months now and I'm going under the car, fixing my house, fixing my cars, doing all sorts of stuff in this workwear. So if you like to try one of these trousers, jackets, well, you can have one of these. You can have just a normal one. If you like to have the builder's butt, this is not the one for you. So, I'll leave you the link in description. Well, there is another issue with the car, which is most Peugeot and Citroën Saxo drivers know. So the gearbox linkage is so weak when you're driving and you're changing gears quickly. Sometimes the ball end part can slip off a little bit when it's a little bit worn and you can bend the linkage part. You can upgrade it, but in this model, it's not been upgraded yet, which is I find out myself on the racetrack. What is it like when you, we, we hit a pothole? We hit a pothole, jumped out of gear, tried to get it back in. I probably didn't press the clutch too hard enough, you know, so just went in there, flicked it back, I think second or third gear, I can't remember. Just flicked it back, couldn't go in. And after that, it started playing up. I thought just gearbox is gone, you know. And before this, we just replaced the clutch. And I thought, here we go, and replaced the gearbox as well, sorry. And I thought something went wrong. I thought is the forks, you know, the selector forks is gone in a gearbox. I thought like, oh, bummer. I thought I'm not all that work again, just to get the gearbox off, new clutch. Uh, bear in mind, used to be carbon ceramic clutch in the car. On a track, when you're ganging bank, and I was on slick tires as well, it's basically on the shaft, the actual clutch just seized on. It's ripped on it and seized on. So I've been suggested, I don't know what your suggestion on that, please drop it down in a comment about these ceramic clutches. To, I've been suggested not to use ceramic clutches because the car is so light and so, you know, so hard deaccelerating on slicks. And if you don't have a good base of uh, uh, carbon ceramic clutches, it could spin on, on the spindle, you know, on a, on a shaft, on a gearbox. So, I don't know. Let me know in a comment, please, because I had this issue. So we fitted uh, factory clutches at the moment. So it's Valeo clutches on there. Brand new, uh, all mechanism, uh, really is bearing everything. So that was one of the issues I had with the car. But apart from that, since new clutch is on, I went a few hill climbs and went fantastic. But let's show you this little hill climb in a rainy, slippery road. It was just start raining, so it was like driving on ice, really and I drive it on normal tires, wasn't on slicks as well. I got uh, Yokohamas on the car, so normal road tire. You have to be so gentle because the car is so light, there's no grip whatsoever on these wet roads. Let's have a look.
So that drive wasn't too bad, wasn't it? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you see it, we are in my backyard, which is under construction right now. You see my little Daihatsu on the right hand corner, my little F20, which if you look through the description, there is a video available about this. And also my Sierra, Mark 1 Sierra 2 liter Pinto, there is a video about it as well. So I leave the link in description for this car too. And there are many other videos coming. Please stay in touch, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button. And if you have a classic car you'd like to introduce to us in the UK, please get in touch. I leave the link in description where you can find us, send us an email and with some photos and see what you got and I might come and visit you and we make a program about your uh, car or even bike. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!